in the next 10 minutes, um, we're going to learn a little bit about um, the American Southwest artist Maynard Dixon. This is actually our 19th uh, art talk. Um, and uh, Sarah Kane is our art historian who has been teaching us about uh, um, artists over the last, um, I guess, five months now almost, right, Sarah? And uh, Maynard Dixon is kind of part of the larger, broad category of expressionist uh, arts, um, uh, early 1900s to the mid 1900s. So I hand it over to, to Sarah. Hi, everyone. I All hope right. you've had a good week. Um, so Maynard Dixon was, we'll start with a little intro on him. So he was born in 1876 in Fresno, California to a family of aristocratic Confederates that actually moved to California after the Civil War. Uh, Dixon attended the California School of Design in San Francisco and traveled during that time to Monterey, to Point Lobos, to Carmel, throughout um, those areas of California. And Dixon's mentor, Charles Loomis, encouraged Dixon. Dixon always had an affinity for Western culture, the kind of pioneering spirit of the West. And so his mentor, Charles Loomis, encouraged him to, quote, travel east to see the real West. And I love that because I imagine at the time, you know, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, for example, obviously east of California, but kind of exemplified the pioneering spirit of the quote unquote West and were probably less developed than California at the time. So as well, Maynard Dixon and his peer Xavier Martinez went on a sketching trip through Arizona and Guadalajara, which um, garnered them much attention. So back in San Francisco, the two decided to exhibit together every Saturday, but to make a steady income, Dixon would also have to illustrate for different newspapers and even books. His first exhibition in the Southwest was actually in 1912 at the University of Arizona. And though he traveled extensively, his home was California and he quickly became a large contributor to many major exhibitions throughout the state. For example, the Bohemian Club, um, the San Francisco Art Association, the University of California, Berkeley, those are just to name a few. Uh, for a time, he actually did live in New York with his wife and daughter, um, but he always felt a calling to come back to the West, to create true art of the West, not the romanticized versions that he was being paid to create. And it's said by his peers that Dixon was a colorful character with a good sense of humor and would often dress like a cowboy, kind of determined to impart a Western style just like that of his paintings. So let's look at his, some of his paintings, shall we? So I've seen this is some people's backgrounds today. Uh, we're going to start off with a bang. This is uh, one of Dixon's most notable works titled Cloud World, done in 1925. And this painting is unique because of its angle. Uh, being known for landscapes, one would think it would be all about the earth and the formations and the rocks, but this is kind of like a skyscape, if you will. Uh, obviously the deep blue is what the eye is drawn towards. And then we can see all the puffy clouds. And what I find interesting is that the bottoms of the clouds are more flat in shape, which mirrors the flat shape of the rock formation at the very bottom. So it almost looks like the clouds are pushing down on the mountaintop. And this is a key example of Dixon's more modernist take on Western art. So this next one is aptly named Wild Horses and was painted in 1927. And I really like this painting because he evokes the sense of wildness of the wild horses through the color used. We've looked at some other artists who have had a disregard of what the real color would be like. So for example, some of the Fauvist artists that we looked at a couple weeks back, if you were here for that, um, and just to refresh, the Fauvists had a total disregard of the realistic color of objects and people. Um, but what's different about this is that Dixon uses these kind of unrealistic colors to enhance the tone of the overall painting. So the purples, the blues, the bright yellow, for example, were probably not actually there in real life when he was looking at this landscape, but he uses them very much on purpose to evoke a sharp, contrasted and very wild landscape. And finally, this painting is titled Thunder Over Ship Rock done in 1943, a bit later, 
what I'm drawn to about this photo is the kind of serenity of it. It's different from Wild Horses and Cloud World that we just looked at because this is much more blended and soft versus the sharp color of the other two paintings. Um, I was watching a video of someone discussing his art and they were talking about how Dixon wasn't afraid to be simple. So there's obviously such detail in his landscapes, but yet he wasn't afraid to let a landscape be just a landscape with, without having to add anything else. Um, he lets the natural beauty speak for itself while obviously using techniques of blending shadows and temperature to evoke the tone of the image. So Dixon's widely regarded as a tonalist overall, but he also has some impressionist and modernist aspects as we can see from the paintings we just saw. Um, but I hope you were able to get a sense of the emotion and the spirit that these paintings evoke. Uh, there's a reason he was so well-respected and influential because his paintings really moved people and conveyed um, truths about the West. And he was one of the first of his kind trying to portray that. So I hope this was an enlightening intro into Maynard Dixon and I will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That was fascinating. Thank you so much. Uh, an interesting thing about Maynard is that he actually helped the U.S. Army design uh, its camouflage for World War I. So interesting little factoid about Maynard. Maynard was a suggestion from one of our associates. I don't, I don't think I recall specifically who, but please, please keep those requests coming and we'll make sure that we add them to our future art series. So thanks, Sarah. Sarah, if you can hang on. Uh, uh, I, we don't have quite time for questions right now, but we might at the very end, if you have a, the possibility of hanging on, that'd be great. Thanks. Great. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you.